All right, guys, Darren from Honest Money, and welcome back to another video. Now, if you're thinking about selling or buying a house at the moment, one of the things you're almost certainly keeping a very close eye on, and that is house prices. Now, if you believe the mainstream media, we are heading for a massive crash. However, I don't think it's as clear cut as that. And what I wanna do in this video is look at both sides of the argument. Also, at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you my prediction for the next 12 months, and hopefully you guys will join in. You'll post your predictions in the comments, and then I can make a video next year and see how we all did. So let's kick things off straight away by taking a look at some of the factors that may contribute to house prices coming down over the next 12 months. So up first we have a fairly obvious one and that is that the UK is heading for an imminent recession. Now technically we're not in a recession yet as we've only had one quarter of negative growth um, but we're certainly expected to have a second quarter of negative growth which will put us officially into recession. Now generally speaking recessions in the past have also been accompanied by house prices dropping. So it's the first piece of evidence that house prices may go down. Um, also we're expecting widespread job losses especially as the furlough is tapered down and comes to an end. We're expecting to see lots of job losses and when you combine the recession with the job losses that means there's less people employed there's less money to go about and there's less money in the housing market so we're quite expecting house prices to come down we also have the issue that a number of transactions that were agreed pre-lockdown may be being renegotiated at the moment so if you had an offer accepted on a house in around march time you might decide to renegotiate now based on the fact you expect the housing market to come down and then that will have that self-fulfilling effect of actually driving house prices down. So I know if I was buying a house and had an offer accepted in February or March and it was still going through, I would certainly be renegotiating at the moment. We then have the three Ds. Now the three Ds are important because they keep the housing market going regardless. So even if people decide not to sell the houses, the three Ds are always gonna keep the housing market going. So unfortunately, people get divorced, people get into debt where they can't sustain paying for the mortgages, and unfortunately people die. And obviously due to lockdown and what's happened, actually those threes are gonna be above levels they would usually be anyway. So that means unfortunately we cannot rely on the fact that people just will refuse to sell or keep house prices high, because unfortunately if someone has either been divorced um, has bad debt or has sadly passed away, those houses are probably gonna be resold regardless and that means the transactions will go through and the average selling prices will come down. You also then have the continuation of social distancing restrictions, which causes issues in a few different ways. First, the people that are looking to sell the house may be reluctant to have estate agents around in the first place. Also, if they do decide to actually sell the house, they may not want viewers coming around or the people actually viewing the houses may not wanna to go to the house. So the social distancing restrictions will kind of have a downward impact on house prices in general, as I think it will reduce the activity a little bit. Uh, you also have the fact that help to buy is ending. Now that's a very controversial scheme introduced after the last house price crash that has finally been scaled back i think from 2021 that's been scaled back so that is going to have an impact it's been used to prop up new build prices and has a subsequent knock-on on used prices as well um, but with that coming to an end i think that will play its part you don't have the continuation of Brexit uncertainties. We're probably at the most important stage at the moment, although it's getting very little coverage. At least one way or another, we're gonna know in the next six months what is happening, good or bad, however you see it, it doesn't really matter, but it can certainly play its part in sending house prices down if things don't go very smoothly. You then have buyer inactivity, so people that are wary about the market might just be sitting back hoping for a price drop, or they might just be waiting for market clarity. So that inactivity in itself could contribute towards house prices going down. And then finally, you have what is one of the most important things in this list, and that is the disappearance of low deposit mortgages. So this is a table I took from the Witch website this morning, and this shows the number of mortgage deals available for 90% loan to value mortgages comparing March to May. And it's dropped from 294 to 24. And that's a drop of over 90%, which means that anyone with a low deposit, like a five or 10% deposit, is gonna really struggle to get a mortgage, especially a mortgage on a good deal, as there are so few deals available now. And if people can't get on the ladder, you know, first time buyers with a small deposit cannot get on the ladder, it will impact the entire housing chain. So when you look at that list in its entirety, there are quite a few compelling reasons there as to why house prices are probably gonna go down. Um, but it isn't set in stone, it's not guaranteed. And these are some of the reasons why that may not happen. So up first, there is probably a good chance that there is some pent up demand in the housing market. And that comes from two sources. First is lockdown itself. So for a three month period, people couldn't really buy or sell a house. So there's some pent up demand there. There's also the Brexit uncertainty of the past couple of years. Much of the mainstream media has been telling people that house prices were gonna drop because of Brexit. Now I know Brexit hasn't officially happened yet in the true sense, um, but there's still been people telling us that that's gonna happen for the last couple of years. So there's probably a number of buyers who are held off buying, who are waiting for the clarity before they actually move forward with their purchase or their sale. So I think there is some pent up demand in the market from that. 
We also have the fact that interest rates are super low at the moment, which means people can get mortgages for houses which they maybe couldn't have afforded previously because debt is a lot, lot cheaper than it's ever been. And I expect interest rates will stay low for the foreseeable because the country as a whole just cannot afford for interest rates to go up. Um, on top of this, we have the fact that new housing developments in this country are not keeping up with our population growth. So in 2019, we built around 160,000 houses where our population growth, which come from immigration and from birth rate, um, grew by 355,000 people, which is over double the number of houses we actually built. And on top of that, we had 90,000 divorces in 2018. I couldn't find an up-to-date figure for 2019. But if you say if they've 90,000 people, they now need two houses each. So if you add that onto your population growth, all of a sudden you can see why our new housing developments are being outstripped by our population growth and our demand for housing. So there's still huge demand for housing in the UK and there are probably not enough properties to go around. And that's one of the things that have pushed prices so high so far and will probably continue to support Port prices going forward. Uh, we also have the fact that estate agents will continue to overvalue properties. It's part of their game to land new instructions by offering the highest valuation. People tend to go with the estate agent that offers the best valuation as people naturally want to get the most possible money for their property. So if estate agents are overvaluing properties and those properties will come onto market, everyone sees the market at these higher price points will have the effect of stopping it going down as quick as you might expect. Also, buying is often cheaper than renting. I saw some stats this morning that on average across the UK is generally around 10% cheaper per month to buy than it is to rent as providing of course you can get the deposit in the first place um, so there's always going to be that keeping house prices high because people will buy as soon as they're able to because they don't really want to rent if buying is cheaper um, and then finally you have the fact that investors and landlords are sitting there waiting to snap up their next opportunity you know when properties come down they're going to buy their properties that they can then rent out because renting is going to make them more money so all of those factors combine to provide some support to the housing market my gut feel is that the negative factors will override the support um, and I'm going to come back to my prediction in a moment. But up first, I just want to give you some other considerations which don't really fall into either pro or against house prices going up or down. Uh, the first one is that government may introduce additional support and stimulus like they did last time. So they may come up with a newfangled scheme which will help support housing prices. Um, in 2008, the market wasn't allowed to correct properly. Uh, the government introduced low interest rates, quantitative easing, um, and the help to buy scheme. So the market didn't correct fully in my eyes. So I don't know if there's much capacity left them to actually introduce any new schemes going forward and whether that correction that we were due in 2008 may actually take place now. I guess we're gonna find out over the next year or two. Also keep in mind that analysts aren't always right. You see media outlets quoting analysts all the time with these scaremonger stories, but generally speaking, you look back, analysts haven't exactly been accurate over the past 10 years when it comes to finances and house prices. Also, it can take two or three months to move house. So any reports you've seen quoted recently that are covering the lockdown period what will be more interesting to see is the reports in two or three months now that market activity is starting to resume and people can go out and actually sell the house and do viewings and stuff like that those reports in a few months will be a better indication of where things are going also keep in mind that prices may vary by region and some of this can be impacted by new working practices for example there are many many people who work in london who either live near london or in london just for their job if their new working practices allow them to work from home permanently they might look to relocate across the country, which could have a large impact on prices if a large number of people all of a sudden suddenly relocate from one location to another. So keep that in mind going forward. It'll be interesting to see if new working practices do have an impact on how people move around the country and how house prices react Accordingly, price drops aren't always a bad thing, especially if you're a homeowner looking to upgrade. So if you're selling a three bedroom house for 300,000 pound and you're buying a four bedroom house for 400,000 pound, if the housing market has come down 10%, you might lose 30,000 on yours, but you're gonna save 40,000 on the house you buy. So make sure you keep in mind, it's not always a bad thing if it does happen. So finally, moving on to my prediction. What is my prediction? Well, I think as I said a slide or two ago, overall, I think the market is gonna head down, but I don't think it's gonna be by a huge amount. So I think initially we're gonna see around about five percent drop by this time next year and remember i want to see your predictions let me know in the comments what do you think is going to happen over the next year i'm going to try and make a video in about a year from now i'm going to see how my prediction fared and also see what you guys say in the comments so make sure you let me know in the comments what do you think house prices are going to do over the next 12 months i think there's going to be about a 10 percent drop in london i think london will be hardest hit as that's where properties are most overpriced at the moment i think we'll see generally around a five percent drop in the south and surrounding areas and up north i think things there'll be very little movement as there'll be movement from 
from the south to the north. As we've seen over the last few years, house prices in the north have actually outpriced house prices in the south. And I think we'll continue to see that. I think overall across the UK, we'll probably see a drop about 5%, but it will vary by the region that you are looking at. And then finally, I think this will be followed by a sustained period of stagnation, which will lead to some real world price drops. So what do I mean by that? Well, for example, if a house cost £300,000 and a year later, it still cost £300,000, but inflation was 1% that year, then that house in the real world terms has dropped by £3,000. I think that's what we'll see going forward. And I think we were getting towards that point anyway, pre-lockdown where house prices are pretty much ground to halt. And I think that is what the long-term future is for the UK housing market after this initial drop that we're probably gonna see in the next 12 months or so. But like I said, I'd love to hear your guys' opinions. Mine is just pure speculation. You know, I've given you evidence from both sides. Anything can happen, who knows? Let me know in the comments what you think. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And as you scroll down to leave your comment, make sure you hit the like button on the way. And I'll see you guys in the next video.